This view is from 4,220 feet in elevation at High Knob Observation Tower in Wise County. Today's video will take you to a mature forest, a middle-aged forest, and a new young forest regenerating after a harvest. We will take a look at a harvest site and then later visit a 20-year-old forest and a forest that was salvage harvested after a storm. In the distance here we can see Mount Rogers on the left and White Top and as we turn looking more in the southern direction we can look into the mountains of North Carolina and as we continue turning and looking around more due south then we will be turning and looking more in a southwestern direction we can see the mountaintops of Tennessee. As we turn around in a northern direction, we will see the mountaintops in the distance of Kentucky. So we're looking out at the mountain of Kentucky. As we continue looking more northern and turning more in a northeastern direction, we will be able to look into the mountaintops of West Virginia. Hello, I'm Bill Worrell. I work as a Forestry and Natural Resource Extension Agent with Virginia Cooperative Extension, located in Southwest Virginia. Today, I'm going to take you into the forest to see some different types of forest and to see the different age of forest. We also want to look at regeneration after harvesting. Here we have a nice northern red oak tree growing. It's growing as a single stem tree. It, that's allowed it to get bigger and be much larger than some of the other trees in the forest here. It's greater than 20 inches in diameter. If we zoom in, I'll show you down the hill from that northern red oak tree. We've got two trees growing close together. The one on the left is a sugar maple tree. The one on the right is a black cherry tree. Again, they're growing as single stem trees, and that will allow them to get bigger and grow larger over time. Here's a black cherry tree I found growing as a multi-stem tree. Obviously, it was growing or began growing as stump sprouts many years ago, and some of them have died over time, but a few of them still are alive and are continuing to grow to get taller and larger in diameter. These multi-stem stump sprouts that grow into bigger, older trees are candidates for crop tree release. So once, it, once they get old enough and big enough, that it shades out the forest floor and then mainly what we have growing are the trees, it's a good idea to go in and kill, cut down or kill some of those stump sprouts so you just have one main tree growing off of that stump as a stump sprout instead of a cluster of several smaller trees. And if we look on the site, here again we can see some of the northern red oak growing, some red maple, actually I see a black birch down there, and some more oak. It shows you how the, the forest is greening up and gr starting to grow back after last year's harvest. It was harvested with a clear cut. This site was harvested last year, but on this upper portion of the harvest where they got started early in the, in the summer, the trees actually started stump sprouting the same year the harvest actually was taking place. See some limbs that are remaining on the site. And I just wanted to point this out because even though this site was harvested with a mechanical logging operation, with tracked cutting machine, with grapple skitters, and then they, they took in the treetops and put those through a whole tree chipper, and they chipped those up into biomass that went to um, a biomass market. But even though they, they were utilizing those treetops and tree limbs from the site, it's impossible to get them all. Uh, and that's a good thing. We want some coarse woody debris to be remaining on the site to actually decompose into the soil. I want to show you some more regeneration in last year's clear-cut harvest. Right here we have a red oak seedling that's growing. And just a couple of feet away, we also have another red oak seedling that is growing. And if we walk a few more feet, closer to four feet away, here we will find a chestnut oak seedling. And if we look at the timber type adjacent to the clear-cut harvest, we will find a mixture of some red oaks. We find an occasional white oak or two. We find some scattered red maple trees. 
and we find an abundance of tulip poplar trees in places and a few other miscellaneous hardwood trees growing like some sourwoods, black gum. I'm now going to take you into an area that was harvested in the summer of 2018. So we will have at least two years of growth on this regeneration. Here's the stump and stump sprouts I was just standing in front of. I wanted you to see how many sprouts are coming off that stump. We've got lots of sprouts and you can see that they are leafing out. If we take a closer look there, we can see that there are some brown leaves and that's just freeze damage from the freeze we had over Easter weekend. We do find some oak regeneration on this site from stump sprouts. We've got some red oak stump sprouts and that just a little bit away from there. We have some red oak seedlings that we have found that are growing. Got some red oak seedling, tulip poplar. Just another couple feet away, we find a hickory. And we find another red oak. And of course, there's also some maple. Again, here we see some more tulip poplar stump sprouts. We also have some uh, brambles growing here. Be some good wildlife food. Uh, we also have what appears to be a cherry seedling growing. Looking behind here, we can find another cucumber tree. We can find another northern red oak. And we just see lots of vegetation growing on the site with some more woody debris. Lots of vegetation growing. We walk over here and we can even find some black locust seedlings on the site. At our higher elevations, we'll even find some black locust trees growing in our forest. Here we find some more stump sprouts of tulip poplar, and they're probably five feet tall. In the background there, you can see some more red maple. As we pan around here, we can see some more seedlings of tulip poplar. We see lots of briars and other vegetation here on the site as well. Here we find some white oak stump sprouts. So we've also got some white oak regeneration on this site. Here we have some more red oak stump sprouts in this harvest area. And if we look close, we can find some other seedlings growing. We can find tulip poplar seedlings growing. Right here we actually have a sassafras seedling growing. You see the three-lobed leaf there in the middle? As we look across this harvest that was conducted in 2018, we can find lots of stump sprouts growing. We've basically had two years of growth. We can see stump sprouts that are between four, five, some maybe even six and seven feet tall. A variety of species, red maple, tulip poplar. We see some red oak and a, just a mixture of our species here in the mountain. If we look at these stump sprouts here, the one there in the middle was the red maple, and the one to the right is the red oak. And you look and see which one is growing faster. Our maple is growing faster than our red oak, and that, that shows just part of the challenge we have in managing our regeneration and managing the species that we want growing back in the forest. The red maple will grow much faster than the red oak. Since the logging crew is down for lunch right now, I can get an up-close look at the operation. Here we see some pulpwood material and some of the material that will likely go into the chipper. We scroll around here, we'll see the, the loader and logs piled up behind the loader. In the foreground there in front of the loader, we see a buck saw that's used to cut material. The blue machine there at the rear of the truck is the chipper and the loader will feed the tops and the limbs into the chipper and the chipper will cut it and blow it into the back of the truck. Okay, I'm over in another section of this forest where they did a salvage cut in early 2011. I just wanted to show you some of the stump sprout regeneration and look at what they did. Um, this particular area, they, they had to do some salvage work but they did not want to do a complete and total harvest. It just got cut much harder than others, and there were some big holes that were created in the canopy uh, that allowed for a lot of regeneration. It takes a lot of space to lay down a big tree, so when you cut those trees down, it takes more space. So if you just have one or two damaged trees that are large in diameter, you end up having to cut a few more in order to create enough space to take those trees down safely and then be able to get the equipment in and out of there to, to take those trees out. So I'm going to turn it around here and show you 
some of the regeneration um, and some of the stump sprouts and you can see just how big those things have grown in just nine years. Here's another one of those stumps and stump sprouts. Uh, again, this tree is only nine years old and you, I put my hat in there so you could see the scale of that. That's actually uh, growing really good. Uh, again, it was a pretty good hole created in the canopy over this area. So this tree was able to get a lot of sunlight and uh, it's really taken off and that, that tree is growing very, very well. In the salvage harvest where we took out some trees, but they didn't have to take all of the trees out, you created a lot of openings to get good regeneration. So we had a lot of sunlight on the forest floor here. We got good tulip poplar regeneration. And this site here could be one that in the near future could benefit from some type of crop tree release. And since the Virginia Department of Forestry has a hardwood initiative, this area could be a site that could probably benefit from a crop tree release type treatment. Okay, I'm over in another section of this forest. Over here is an area where the landowner did not cut out many of the trees. They tried to leave one area of their forest intact. And as you can see behind me here, there's still lots of big trees. I just wanted to pan around here and show you this area. Again, this was part of the area that was harvested as a, most recently as a salvage harvest. And again, they chose not to cut all the trees. Some of the trees that were intact and were not harmed or damaged were allowed to stay. So there are still some areas in this forest with some really large diameter trees. And there are some other areas where the trees were cut heavy because of the damaged trees where they've got young regeneration growing. This is another area in the forest where most recently a salvage harvest took place in 2011. And here are some large trees that are remaining. Uh, this particular area didn't get hit with much damage, so they were able to leave some of the larger trees intact. And again, if we pan around, we can see some skid trail opening, and then we can see some smaller trees that are growing back where they had to take out some of the trees from the damage. Now I'm in a stand that was harvested in 1999. So we have 20 years of new growth and we want to take a look at what we have growing. And taking a look around here on this, this area where I've stopped, we see some yellow poplar. We also see some black cherry and a few other variety of species. But predominantly the species we have growing here are tulip poplar. Of course you also see what we find growing. We find some grapevine growing in this stand as well. And this one's grown all the way up into the crown of that tulip poplar tree. And that's a, uh, a nice tree. It's approximately 10 inches in diameter and would be one that really at this time we should, should come out and consider doing some crop tree release where we kill the competition around this tree and found a ramp patch. And what we've got here is uh, our, our plant growing. And uh, you can see down there, I've scraped away a little bit on the soil, and you can see the way the bulbs are growing, kind of like onions. It's a uh, really potent uh, wild onion type plant, and uh, it grows in the understory of our hardwood forest at some of the higher elevations and moist soil conditions. This vernal pool is a really nice spot, creates a lot of good wildlife habitat, creates a good drinking spot for the wildlife up here on this dry ridge, but it also creates lots of really great habitat for salamanders and frogs. And um, it's, it's full of tadpoles. There are several frogs jumping around the edge of this into the water, so it's a really good wildlife habitat and an interesting spot on this property. I want to thank you for joining me today for my 15 minutes in the forest segment. Next week, Jennifer Gagnon will take you into the woods and do some tree identification.